Welcome to our YouTube channel, ladies and gentlemen. I want to begin this analysis by saying thank you very much to those who support us, our subscribers and our viewers. The channel continues to grow, courtesy of your unwavering support. If you are watching us for the first time, allow me to request you on the same breath to hit that subscribe button and click the notification bell so that YouTube will recommend to you our videos. Another request, kindly like this particular video so that it can be recommended to more viewers. Raila Mulodinga jetted out of the country to the United Kingdom. And this journey is being talked about. I have seen people give several reactions to it. Now, the reason why he's jetting out, is raising eyebrows and, and it's being talked about, is because it is happening against a backdrop of a few things. One, he took on Meg Whitman, the U.S. ambassador to Kenya, and he took her head on, telling her to shut up and stop telling us that the last election was free as and was the freest and the most verifiable. It is also happening at a time when his team, led by Kalonzo Musyoka, is preparing to engage the government side, led by the ever vocal majority leader in the National Assembly. Kimani Ichungwa. He's a principal like William Ruto. And when these talks start, if they reach uh, a, a, a stalemate, then you will see them, re, you know, going back to their principal and saying, let us, you know, consult Raila or William Ruto. So in light of this, people are really wondering why Raila has jetted out. But I think Raila is, has got every right to jet out. Now, he records that uh, he met, he bumped into the Delaware Senator, Chris Coons, a man who he describes as his longtime friend, and he praised him, saying that Chris Coons means well to our country. Now, Raila has chosen to go to the United Kingdom. And why do I feel that the choice, the United Kingdom, is very significant to us? Let me explain to you why it's very important. One, you all understand that it is the United States of America and the United Kingdom that are leading these negotiations and one, they are the ones that uh, forced Raila out of his victory. That is known. Or in other words, they are the ones that gave William Ruto his win. And they are also the two countries that are leading the European Union and all these Western countries to ensure that Raila abandons this electoral, the quest for electoral justice. They want Raila to let William, William Ruto rule in peace because William Ruto is their project, is their child, and they want him to succeed because when William Ruto succeeds, they also succeed because William Ruto is championing for their, 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 their demands. There are things that they want to be done not only in Kenya, but also in Africa. Their interest are taken care of as long as William Ruto is ruling at peace. But if you have juxtaposed the two countries, the United Kingdom is a bit passive if you compare it to the USA. Take, for example, the USA ambassador to Kenya, Meg Whitman. She is behaving as if she owns a half of our country. She does not behave like a diplomat in our country and that's why she's rubbing so, uh, shoulders the wrong way with the opposition if i ask you today to mention the united uh, the british high commissioner to kenya you might not even tell me but the name nail wigan is the man who was appointed to replace uh, Jane Marriott, I think, who had uh, completed her term. But this diplomat is very quiet and very passive. You will not hear him talk so much about the situation in Kenya. And this is very important to us because I said earlier, Kenyans are trying to heal from the August elections in the year 2022. Others have accepted that things, the way remain, they are, and they want to move on. But when you see other diplomats coming up to tell us that the last election was free and fair, then it makes others wonder. Nikama kuongeza, you know, iltunasema adding petrol to fire or salt to injury. And so Raila Molodinga chose the United Kingdom because the way they are trying to deal with the situation 
is one that is amicable. Even if they believe that the last elections were free and fair, they also understand that Raila controls another a huge number of voters who have not healed. And so they have decided to keep quiet. So Raila's choice of the United Kingdom is one that was very deliberate. And one of the things that Raila is trying to do, he is going to register his displeasure to the United Kingdom because it is the United Kingdom and the United States that are leading these talks and they want to ensure that Raila remains calm and lets William Ruto, you know, work. So Raila is going to tell them that your other partner, the USA, is giving reactions that are not really good for the bipartisan talks because as we speak, the, 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 the arrangements are underway and is going to tell the United Kingdom maybe to talk to the other partner because what happened did not please Raila Molodin. That's why he waited to go and answer Meg Whitman at the very place where Meg Whitman had, uh, had, had, had given a speech about the last elections and pronounced herself as if she was the IEBC chairperson. So he's really going to do that. Raila is also going to meet, according to the to, to Denis Sunyang, who is the spokesperson, Raila is going to meet the opposition leaders in, 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 in the United Kingdom. And at a time when Kenya is ripe for reforms, Raila is looking at strengthening the opposition. And let me tell you something. The magnanimity that has formed Raila's character we, is one that I always complain about. It will deny Raila a chance to become the president of this nation. Raila is so magnanimous that he is able to work with those people who continue to disappoint him every day. And on this I want to tell you that Raila has abandoned the quest to remove Ruto from office. If you are a Raila supporter, please get this. Raila is so much concerned about strengthening the democracy in Kenya, ensuring that the government of the day will not mutilate our constitution. Because I have studied Raila. It is like he, 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 it, he believes that he must not be the president of this country for Kenya to move on. All he wants is to ensure that we have the right policies in place, we continue to strengthen our constitution and that's why he's up in arms with William Ruto whenever William Ruto makes moves that are tantamount to mutilating our constitution. So on this, he's going to meet the opposition leaders to find out how he can continue to strengthen because he has accepted that he now leads the opposition and makes checks and balances that will ensure that William Ruto does the right things. So he's going to meet the opposition leader there. We, if you look at the way things are moving, even central provinces that are leading and, and protecting William Ruto's, you know, win and victory, they also feel that we need to go back to the BBI. They are talking about the one man, one shillings, one vote. And Kenya is ripe for change. Of course, people like Rigidi Gishegwa don't even think that we need a constitutional change because what is in their heart is that they are in the government. In fact, Rigidi Gishegwa wakes up, eats and sleeps that they are in power. There is nothing to, to him, as long as there is, that they are in power, that is the end of the world. They are in power. But others have started talking and they want to see to it that we have uh, constitutional reforms, look at our constitution areas that should be amended. So Raila is going to look into that and see that we have a strong opposition. The fact that he's also going to meet opposition, uh, the, the businessmen there, I will tell you this. Raila is looking at 2027 and he wants to ensure that he keeps his friends. So whenever you are going for a, an election, there are people who fund you. And he wants to ensure that he maintains his friends, friends who are abroad, and even to acquire more. So he's going to meet some of these businessmen to ensure that he starts strengthening Azimio. So that even if he's going to run or they are, they are going to give the button to maybe Kalonzo or other people, they want to ensure that they have a strong, a strong, you know, party, a strong coalition. And his visit is going to look for money. He could also be looking for investors because, as I told you, Raila wants Kenya to grow. He's fighting for Kenyans, and he could be, he could even look for some investors to strengthen most of his counties because he has realized that William Ruto wants to take us back to a situation where he keeps all the resources at the national level so that members of parliaments and governors come and beg for him. So Raila might use this occasion to look for investors 
to the Azimio counties to grow. That is why he fought for the devolution together with others. So he might be looking for strengthening the devolution and looking for money to start strengthening the party. The part. Because running a party is not a walk in the park. They have to go for campaigns, uh, recruiting new members and all that. He has to do this when there is money. And this is the reason why I believe that he jetted out there. Raila wants to show the Kenya Kwanza team that he is an international leader. While the Ruto team still feels that because they are interfering with him in Kenya, because people like Meg Whitman are talking all of, ill of him, he has not crossed the border, you will see how Raila is being received. Because the UK and the US and all the other team knows very well that Raila has been winning and they still respect him. They will give Raila a strong support because UK and US will always want Raila out of power. But they want to make sure that they strengthen the opposition because Raila will help them checkmate William Samoy Ruto. You know, William Ruto, like recently, people saw him, you know, hosting the president of Iran. And it, crossed, uh, it raises a lot of eyebrows when you see William Ruto behaving that way. They, in order for William Ruto not to deal Dali, you must give him a strong opposition. And with this, the USA and the UK will always support. So Raila is also going to ensure that UK gives commitment to the ongoing talks in terms of, of, of uh, facilitation, in terms of what they are talking about. Because I know there are demands that Raila has pushed forward vis-a-vis -vis those that the government has also put forward. So he's lobbying. This is basically lobbying. So that they support this. And the last one, recently Raila's people were killed on the streets. And William Ruto has captured the ICC, has captured some of these diplomats. So I think looking, Raila is looking at international human rights groups to support him in his quest for justice. Because he says he wants to ensure that the police and the perpetrators of violence and the police brutality to innocent Kenyans must be brought to book and i think that for him to achieve this he must look for support from the international uh, quarters because it is like he is alone william Ruto is making moves that only shows that he is supported by most of these you know international countries so raila wants to get to ensure that he's got this support